I'm like, what? The first car you sold was that Toyota Sienna, wasn't it? Yeah, the Minimax. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was like, yeah, somebody's out here. I said, man, you're going to have to sell that car. Yeah. And so... <laughs> Money face, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that uh, 2024 Fusion is gone. She's out of there, you guys. Um, really good feeling, really good feeling. Especially since that thing has been around for 86 days, man. So um, four days, we we're pretty much four days out um, answering a question. It's a little bit loud in the detail shop, so let me bag up a little bit. Let me bag up a little bit. Um, but to answer the question, um, somebody commented on uh, my last video and said, when do I let cars go? More expensive cars, once they hit about close to 90 days or after 90 days, that's usually when I decide, okay, I'm gonna go ahead and wholesale it or run it through the auction or whatever the case may be. Um, but yeah, we didn't have to do that. So I'm really, really happy about that. Um, oh, oh, let me show y'all what we got going on in here. This is the trusty pickup, you guys. I'm loving that truck, man, 111,000 miles or something like that. Um, I picked this one up for only, uh, what, 880 bucks. Um, and so this thing is going to be, I told y'all about, I think I told y'all about this. Um, we had to do, um, brakes and rotors all around though. And then a transmission gasket. And then we're going to be doing a oil change soon. Um, this thing right here is that BMW, the 530 uh, XI. Somebody's supposed to be coming out between, I think one and two today. Um, so we're going to try to get this thing sold. Um, that is Paul back there doing a detail. Um, it is Saturday. So it is very, very slow. I didn't call anybody else in, so that's what we're doing, man. So he's got this thing going. Um, I need to make that video, man. Y'all asked about a video. Um, shout out to uh, Montana Kinger, man. Appreciate you. Um, he's been on part of this channel for a very, very long time. Um, he uh, gave me, always giving me shout outs, always commenting, liking videos, all that good stuff. Um, but I didn't know he was in Minnesota. He came out to um, the Resurrection Detail in uh, Maplewood, our Maplewood location, left an excellent review. Um, and from what I was told, Eric said that you love the car. So I'm hoping that's true for sure, because that's what we strive for, is to get the best best experience when it comes to detailing as well. Um, but yeah, man, let me jump out here, um, show you guys what's going on. This thing, he doing a complete detail on this right here. It's super loud. I'm, he's actually doing something I've never even seen him do before. Hey, Paul, Paul. Well, I never, I never seen that um, that trick you were doing. What were you doing with the, with the? You had the towel on on top of that, right? Wrapped on it. On this? Yeah. Yeah. So I'm not, because this is sometimes pushes uh, water out. Okay. Okay. Now you're able to push this end around where you can't really put it, put it in. Ah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Nice. Okay, so that's something I've never seen before. I'm not a detailer, you guys. Um, I am the car dealer, right? I'm the business guy, so I've never seen that before. Um, Paul, he's got about... Uh, Paul, take a break, man. Come talk to the camera, man. Come talk to the camera, man. Cut the air compressor off. Turn the air compressor off. We're going live on YouTube, baby. All right, so how long you been detailing? Uh, over 10 years. Over 10 years. Who was... Who... You started off with Eric, right? In the detail world? No. No, okay. I started at Talisley Ford. Okay, so you that started off at a job. Ford dealership. Yep. And then how long after that did you start working with Eric? Uh, I think it was back in 2013. 2013, y'all. So we're in 2024, 11 years ago. That's more, yeah, about, then you're talking about 11, 12 years worth of experience. Yep. Okay. All right, so 12 years of experience. When did you meet me? Uh, about six months ago. Sorry. Six months ago. Six months ago. We're, talk, talk a little bit, man. You're just coming from Florida. <laughs> Uh, I moved to Florida from Minnesota. Um, my wife, her family is out here, uh, and then we decided to move back. I hit up my old boss, which was Eric. Um, I asked him for a job, because I knew I'm capable of what he desires for, as far as the car. Um, he offered, so uh, we talked to my business partner, and we'll go from there. I went in, just normal, you know, filled out an application, met with the guys. And I was hired on, and here I am. Um, All right, now let's say this. When you first came in, what did you... We ain't, let's not talk about pay. Let's not talk about pay. But let's say when you first came in, what was your position? Uh, 
detailer. All right, you were a detailer, and that was at what location? At Maplewood. At Maplewood. All right, so he started off as a detailer in Maplewood when he came back from Florida. That was six months ago. Then what did we do? We started, we, in that time, we were just getting ready to start this detail shop? We, we were opening this location, yeah. Okay, okay. Yeah, we so, were still in the process of, like, getting everything set up and building. Yep, yep. And so what happened was Paul, actually, it was kind of like an accident of him coming out here with me. It was not supposed to happen like that. He was supposed to stay in Maplewood uh, to help Eric, but he ended up coming out here, and I didn't have I didn't think that I was going to have him be a manager to be honest I thought I was going to have him just be quality and all that stuff but he stepped it up 100% I don't know what happened in his brain what happened in your brain man I, I never asked you that what happened <laughs> I mean the quality of a car you know you, when you buy yeah. a brand new car you see how clean it is it feels brand new you'll get in and you feel comfort you know that's why you buy that car well that's exactly what we're trying to give to back to the customer the car yep. that they bought, originally bought which you know brand new in this case you know it's a used car but when they get back in the car they feel like they just bought it you know that's that's the main goal to satisfy the customer with the happiness of how clean and good the car actually looks yep yep so that's what we were striving for for the detail shop and then obviously you guys know i own major motors been a car dealer for as long as we can remember so um now let's talk about him let me put the camera back on him let's talk about him stepping it up he just i think he just we kind of just threw you in there right yeah I, I think i had like a um there was something going on we were picking up cars and then all of a sudden a customer came and he was like hey somebody's looking at a car and i'm like what the first car you saw was that toyota sienna wasn't it yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. He was like, yeah, somebody's out here. I said, man, you're going to have to sell that car. And so <laughs> I said, you're going to have to sell that car. And so he uh, he sold the car, man. He sold the car. <laughs> so um, I think he was, he sold more cars than I have from his location. As a matter of fact. So um, he stepped I, I it up. Cars, yeah, yeah. So, I mean, it just realistically, what you're trying to give to the customer is what they are looking for. And you know, in that case, it was a mom buying her daughter a car. She had the mom had or the daughter had the kids where she really should be once a safe minivan that's you know is capable to haul like three four kids plus the groceries if you want to call it that mm -hmm. you know going on in big trips you know that's a big thing yep. for a mom buying a car for a daughter yep yep and so and now and let me tell you all this so how paul's able to sell the car is real simple so i told you guys this long long ago we first started the uh, YouTube is pretty much getting a solid product and then letting the car speak for itself. Now, Paul's not a salesman. Paul's not a salesman, man. So look, look, Paul, look, Paul ready to clean some cars, man. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. See, I don't look at my tire, y'all. We don't. I don't come dressed to impress, really. I come sometimes. I mean, sometimes I might, but most of the time I'm just coming as me, um, Paul. Exactly, but we don't look crazy though. So we got the we got the even though we may look crazy, we still gonna have a major motors logo. He gonna have a resurrection on, or he gonna have a major motors logo on as well. So we're still gonna be in uniform. Um, but let me ask you this, Paul. So what, in terms of the cars, if a customer is freaking out about a car, getting ready to buy it from me, what is something that you tell them that I do? So that way, it kind of assures them that they're getting a solid product. Um, mainly to look at our car faxes, but um, if the customer is eager to buy that car and they're just waiting for the other financial situation to go through, um, we would politely ask them if they want to put the money on hold and we would give them a specific time frame of how long the car they, we can hold it for them. Um, if they're able to come in with that time frame, you know, we can process the paperwork pretty quick and they can be on their way with the car. Okay, so that was, so he answered a different question, which is perfectly fine, because I wouldn't even thought about that. But uh, we do have a very uh, quick process, so we don't try to hold people inside of the place, like hostage or anything, try to get extra money out of them. It's more like, hey, this is the car that you wanted, let's you know get it out of there. So um, as far as my process of my vehicles go, I'll answer that myself, because I told you guys this before. Um, the process of the vehicle is simply going to get the car, getting it fixed, getting it inspected, doing everything you're supposed to do to make it safe, safe, and then getting it cleaned up. After you did that, then there's nothing else to do. Person already made up their mind before they even got there. So, um, 
you know, that, that is what determines a person buying a car from you or not. Sometimes you get what we call tire kickers, which means they're just coming around checking out a car. But again, you know, I would say, let me, all right, let's, let's have Paul answer this. Percentage ratio. People that come out for a car, what's our percentage ratio of selling that car to them? I think our percentage is good, though. Um, Would you say 50-50, 75%? Like, what do you think? Uh, on my end, lately, it's been like a 75%. Okay. Um, you know, a lot of customers, they, like you said, um, they come in already ready to buy the car. And once they do that, the final test drive and just feel the car, the way it drives, it really sells them. And you know, having it, again, cleaned, yep. being serviced, maintained, everything's in good shape for them. Um, I think in, we're... A solid 75%. I, I would agree with that. So, um, and that is also that comes from trust. So that we got a brand. Obviously, I've been selling cars, whatever, how long Major Motors been in, uh, in business. But I have a very, very good reputable brand with gr very, very good um, reviews. Um, so even from that, that kind of shows people that we have a trustworthy brand, um, and then we're able to uh, get them out the door with minimal questions. Sometimes you get the people that are just, they've been burned before. Um, we just had somebody, what, the other day, uh, Chevy Equinox, right? Yes, was it Chevy Equinox? Yeah, 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 it was one of them. It was the silver one she was gonna buy, right? And then, it was a black one she came for the test drive. She came for the test drive, the black and silver one. Yeah, and then she wanted the silver one, but only thing we had was, the. Uh, um, when this was my mechanic's fault, he gave us the printout that we paid for it for the vehicle inspection, put on their vehicle inspection, all that stuff showed what we got fixed, but he didn't give us our form that said, hey, this is what's checked, this is how it inspected and all that. So they were freaked out and they said they were gonna come back the next day and they didn't. So the point of that is, is that I would have had that sold, right? So one, they wanted to buy it from me because obviously I have a good rating. Two, they liked the car, three, um, they would have bought it for sure if I had that safety inspection there. So that's pretty much the sauce, man. It's nothing, it's no rocket science to selling cars. Um, you just got to buy you a good product, something that somebody wants. Um, my brother told me this a long, long time ago. There's always a car for somebody. So um, that's it, man. I'm going to end the video. Until then, I'm out. Peace.